guys and welcome to Save the Moment. So for those that are new here, a uh, quick introduction about myself. My name is Angelia and my boyfriend and I work currently in the United States on something called an HTB visa. And if you guys want to know any more about that, there are tons of videos that I have previously shot for you guys. But today we are going to be speaking about a different way you can travel. So one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel is to help open up people's perspectives on how you can work, live, travel abroad. Um, you can be a South African, of course, because that's who I am, but you can be anybody from anywhere in the world who's looking for a different alternative to their day-to-day -day lives, right? And not that that's a bad thing, okay? But sometimes we want to travel, we want to see the world, and we're just not quite sure where to look or how to do it, right? So today, um, <laughs> I touched on this, by the way, in a very, very long ago video uh, when I first posted on YouTube, but I used to work on the ships, okay? And this is probably about 10 years ago. And as much as you may be arguing, okay, well, that was a really long time ago, much has changed. That is true, much has changed. But the premise of how to go about working on the ships of how to enjoy your time while you're on the ships and what the different things are that you can do on the ships are very much the same. In today's time, there are so many companies launching brand new cruise ships, Virgin Voyages being one of them, and they are not stopping there. I think they've, at this point in time, launched around three ships. Uh, Viking is launching ships left, right and center, Viking cruises. Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Celebrity, Oceana, Crystal Cruises. There's hundreds of different cruise lines. And depending on what you're looking for and what kind of experience you're looking for is why we are here today. So what I wanted to share with you guys in this video today is pretty much a vague overview of what to look for um, and how to look for jobs. But I will definitely go into more detail in more videos uh, along the way. So this is really just an introduction to cruise ships and ship life and what it's like and just skimming over the surface so that I can give more in-depth content for you guys so that you really get a full understanding of what it's like to live and work on a cruise line. All right, so first up to note is it is not easy to get a job on a cruise line. And when I say not easy, I mean because you are competing against hundreds and thousands of people globally. And please don't let that deter you because it is so possible. And if you're super determined, it's something you will not let yourself be defeated by. Okay, you know, I am very much also a firm believer in if the opportunity just doesn't want to present itself to you, then perhaps it's not the right pathway to go down and I'll uh, just a very quick side note I tried to get a job on the airlines I applied for Etihad I applied for Qatar I applied for Emirates I did it all I didn't stop trying I was like oh you know maybe maybe if I go to Virgin Virgin Airlines that no it didn't work out and it clearly wasn't meant to be and I'm grateful for it because different things opened up after that I obviously met George, him and I ended up coming to the States, so I still fulfilled my dream of travel anyway, and I guess everything does happen for a reason. But going back to the main issue here <laughs> is applying for jobs globally for different cruise lines. And so essentially you must be thinking, okay, well, what kind of jobs could I do on board? The list is very long. But what I'm going to highlight is the, li the list of jobs that you will most likely find being, I want to say, advertised for. So how a lot of cruise lines work is that there are certain positions that you can only apply for once you've worked for the company, once you're on board, and they sort of uh, give you like a learnership program. So if you want to apply for a certain job while you're already on board, you can do that. They give I want to say first dibs to the people that have already proved themselves while they're on board. But the entry jobs that you'll find almost on every website and every recruiting agency would be, of course, restaurant jobs. So you're looking at like cafe stewarding. They call it cafe steward. Is it a cafe steward? I'm not too sure, but I might have to check on that one. But a cafe attendant, that's the right name. A cafe attendant, a server assistant, 
a bar back, a bartender, a waitress. So those will be the certain roles that you can look at in front of house. Of course, they will also recruit for culinary. So you're looking at chefs, you're looking at cooks, you're looking at galley staff and galley staff, uh, for those of you who may not know what that is, are essentially like dishwashers, people that are helping plate food, anything and everything to do with extra hands needed for the operation, okay? You will also find uh, chefs for pastry. You would, I haven't seen it personally, but I would imagine that I think you could also find like sous chef, jo sous chef jobs. <laughs> Uh, you may be able to find an executive chef job, uh, but like I said, that's something that hasn't really crossed my path and maybe it has, but because I haven't really, uh, that's not my industry, that's not something I've taken too much note of. But yes, those are the things that they will recruit for in the culinary side in food and beverage. Then, uh, moving on to let's say the hotel side of things because let's be honest a ship is literally a floating city it has amenities it has a swimming pool it has a spa it has shore excursions which essentially means tours it has boutiques on board where you can buy gifts and you could buy liquor and watches and jewelry and clothing you could buy anything and everything your heart desires while you're on board it has restaurants it's got entertainment it has oh my gosh it's like so endless so of course they need to fill all of those spots right so moving over into the hotel side of things some of the jobs you could find would be in finance so if you've got a strong background in finance of course with finance i think that they would predominantly be looking for people that are qualified of course um, and then you look at concierge front desk so front desk concierge is pretty much the same thing uh, you would be working those ships those ships <laughs> those ships <laughs> and of course on board it is almost 24 hours so you might get night shifts you might get day shifts obviously that's you know a, a whole different ball game that we're going to get into at some point but there are HR positions for some of the cruise lines there is a role called learning and development for some cruise lines which is essentially like a trainer there are onboard trainers you have a crew welfare coordinator and of course this is steering a little bit less away from the hotel side but it all falls under the same department essentially then going more and deeper into the hotel side of things you have cabin stewardesses that is a huge 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 industry that uh, for the cruise ships that they are constantly constantly recruiting for and of course every job on board is a constant recruitment people are coming and going all the time things change you know you might want to stay home now you might not want to be back on board anymore it's a huge commitment to be working on a cruise line right so of course it is not that it's impossible to get a job just because there's so many other people, people are constantly coming and going. It is an endless crazy flow of people on and off a ship and that's just the staff, never mind the passengers, right? <laughs> Which is insane. And then falling under the same hotel, uh, I wanna say umbrella, you have a team called the Shore Excursions Team and essentially they are responsible for all of the tours on board. So some of them will make sure that they have all the tours set up properly you get the opportunity to go on certain tours you have to help coordinate you have to make sure passengers are being disembarked which means getting off the ship embarked which means getting back on the ship and of course it's just this whole incredible operation for the passengers to be able to experience a tour when you're on shore okay so there will be several things several different uh, positions that they would offer uh, for shorex but that is a very difficult position to find on a recruiting agency nine times out of ten that is the position that is firstly filled internally so if you do find a short <laughs> job uh, it's it's really rare so and if you think you got it go for it because if they've outsourced and looking outside it means that they haven't been able to fill the spot adequately and you know somebody could see your resume and have an interview with you and think you are absolutely amazing and you've sold yourself and you are ready for that adventure so go for it okay what else is there because <laughs> it doesn't end there under the hotel department as well you have the entertainment staff and the singers and dancers 
So what is an entertainment staff member and what do they do on board? They are essentially responsible for making sure that the passengers have an incredible time on board. So you'll often find entertainment staff dancing with passengers, doing little things together like making lays if you're in Hawaii. If you are part of the entertainment staff, you're doing bingo nights together with the casino staff, almost forgot what their name is. <laughs> together with the casino staff, of course, but it's hosted by the entertainment staff. Doing, um, what's the other thing that I've seen them do so often? Quiz nights and anything and everything that's got to do with having fun on board, that's an entertainment's job. And that is a really, really cool job to do, especially if you have that kind of personality, you like being around people, you've got a great bubbly laugh, and you, you, people just gravitate towards people like that, and there's nothing wrong with being somebody like me who's a little bit more quiet. I don't think I would have managed as an entertainment staff. It's a lot of work, um, like everything on board, but it's a lot of social socializing and being on top of your A game. You can't have a bad day when you're an entertainer because you have to be fun and you have to be with it and making everybody laugh and dance and I mean it's it's an incredible position and if that is up your alley go for it the other thing that you could do as well is a singer or a dancer so if you have uh, experience in both especially if you've got qualifications that is really awesome for you to be able to apply um, they are a little bit harder to get through if you haven't had any technical uh, learning I guess so if you haven't had like really good experience with singing and you just think you sing really well in the shower probably not the best thing to be applying for but if you have theater experience and you've studied in music and theater and the arts and that kind of thing that could be something really fun to do as well their schedules on board is really different and what ends up happening is that they become a um, hired crew by an external company that comes on board so in some cases what will happen is if you're a singer or a dancer you'll go for a lot of rehearsals before you come on board with your team and then you do like a season and the next group comes on board so there it is a little bit of a different scenario so you wouldn't necessarily be applying through a cruise line to be a singer or a dancer there are multiple recruiting agencies that do that but of course you can't get on board if you don't know what the theater productions are and all the things that you need to do and know and sing when you're on board so that's another thing that you could do another really cool thing to do if you are working on the ships and this is now obviously moving I mean it's really all under a hotel if I really think about it I'm just trying to overcomplicate this but you could also be a beauty therapist so you could be in massage therapy you could do eyebrows and eyelashes and hair you could be a hairstylist you could be a nail technician so all of those uh, type of positions are also recruited for and there there are different um, recruiting agencies so there's like a re different recruiting agency for many of the different departments that you find on board it's very rare that you'll find a cruise line where they do an internal recruitment for all of those positions it's a lot it's a lot to do for one company and remember like I said in the beginning of this video there are thousands of people coming and going on a ship on any given day and that's just the crew you know so there are a lot of cruise companies that will recruit for certain positions but a lot of the other stuff becomes a concession like I said a concession is a company that will actually staff for a cruise line they have a contractual agreement and of course then that would become how you get on board so just a quick little sideline in South Africa there's a company called Steiner I'm not too sure if there's any other ones at the moment I'm sure there are um, but if you know of any other beauty recruiting agencies for cruise lines please let me know and comment in the section below because I, I always love to give more than one option I like to give reliable options as well so Steiner will recruit for massage therapists they will recruit for hairstylists nail technicians all of that kind of thing which is really cool that's a really really nice way to see the world as well and if that's something that you studied and you want to get out of South Africa for a little bit that's a really nice way to do it and you can earn really good money too uh, there are it, within the health spa space you could also go over as a personal trainer 
and of course male or female there is a like a sales I want to say budget that is attached to being a personal trainer because it would be local products well, not local but products related to the company that they would want you to sell so if you have a little bit of sales experience and you're a personal trainer it's a great combo and that will definitely make you a strong contender so that's also really fun <laughs> you get to hang around all the passengers teach them how to do a proper squat and all of those things but no you could do classes as well it's actually really fun and your flexibility of time is obviously you are scheduling different personal training um, slots but it can be a really really cool experience too and you get to meet all of the passengers very much face to face you know so that's a great department to go into the other department that you could go into and this is where i was in so i was a shoppy and a shoppy is essentially somebody that works in retail and we had the, sh the cruise line that i worked for had i think five different stores so the one store we had a um, fine jewelry and watch stores so that was like two separate stores but they were usually connected to each other so you could buy Rolex on board you could buy diamonds you could buy tanzanites and topazes and all of those beautiful beautiful gems and you could obviously buy that jewelry while you were on board and then you had the store I worked in which I think was the fun store <laughs> we had costume jewelry we had designer handbags I had Swarovski I had all of these beautiful beautiful high-end costume jewelry brands as well as clothing brands and handbags and wallets and oh my gosh it was really fun to be in that industry and learn a bit more about that world and you know it was it was really cool to connect with passengers over that kind of stuff because a lot of the time people come in they're looking to find a gift for their grandchildren or their wife or their sister or their brother for anyone really that they cared about and you know finding a gift for somebody was really exciting it made my job fun and you know obviously you're on your feet all day so <laughs> you've got to find ways to make the job fun right so we had that store as well we then had a so what is it called uh, it starts with an S uh, souvenirs souvenirs okay <laughs> Then we also had a souvenir store and you could get paraphernalia with the cruise line logos on it, teddies and captain's hats and t-shirts and all of those kind of things. You could get uh, destination branded t-shirts and bags and you know so that was really you know if you wanted a keychain or a magnet and that kind of stuff you would find it in the souvenir store. We also had a liquor store on board. Of course if you bought any liquor when you were on board you couldn't drink it while you were on board see that catch you like that but it's obviously all tax and duty free so if you're buying any kind of liquor I mean we were in Italy so we had limoncello coming out of our ears when we were on board and people used to love buying that because sometimes if you're on a tour you forget oh my goodness I didn't get a chance to get limoncello because guess what tomorrow we're in Turkey so <laughs> at least they had a space where they <laughs> could come on board and get their souvenir liquor if that's what they were looking for and then that would be stored until the end of the cruise and obviously delivered to the passengers the day before they left so there are as you can see so many many different departments to consider when looking at a cruise line and what's great is that if you have certain experience in a different type of department you could probably be, apply all of those skills to that environment which is amazing more to that because there are so many more departments <laughs> of course when you work on a cruise line there is a concession on some of the cruise lines not all but they have a huge portfolio where you can be a art salesman or an art saleswoman and so it is called Park West Galleries and don't worry guys I'm gonna do a whole video on all the different recruiting agencies that I know so that you know exactly where to go if you are looking at different opportunities so Park West Galleries is an onboard art gallery and of course you have to have a certain type of personality you'd want to be able to be happy to interact with passengers because you want to sell the art right you have to at least have some love for art and what's really cool about Parkways galleries is that you don't necessarily have to have had an arts degree because they will train you on all of the art pieces that they have they will train you on sales tips how to sell a painting what are the different notes you need to know when you are selling a piece of art the artists how to do the research on that I mean it's a really cool kind of job and if you're super fascinated by art and you have a inclination towards that go for it that's a really cool industry to be in and what's nice is that of course you are 
seeing a very different perspective of the passengers because now this is collectible you know you're seeing people that want to hold on to something forever and I think there's a magic in that as well you know so yeah you can tell I was ex sales hey uh. <laughs> so you know there's all of those things to consider when picking out if you want to be in the art gallery or not you can make a really 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 good living on that you can make a lot of money it is not easy in the beginning it's not a get rich quick scheme it takes work it takes a good couple of contracts for you to build up and if you are the lead art auctioneer trust me it is awesome and everybody on board knows who you are because you have to host these whole art auctions with the whole cleaver thing not cleaver is that what it's called the, that hammer thing that judges use yeah they have to use those so you know it's it's really cool and uh, you get to meet a really cool amount of people when you work in the art gallery uh, second to that would be a photographer so or videographer so what's really cool about certain cruise lines is that they have we call them photogs we have the whole photog department where you are standing at the gangway which essentially is the little i want to say bridge that walks you into the ship <laughs> not the one you jump off of <laughs> but uh if you are a photographer nine times out of ten you would be responsible for dressing up as a pirate if you in Jamaica or in the Caribbean okay and then you'll take a picture with a passenger and then the onus would then be for the passengers to buy those pictures once they get back on board and they've been developed etc etc um, on the ship I worked on we had a formal evening so everybody got dressed up they wore their tuxes they wore their beautiful gowns and you could have a beautiful portrait taken so that was a really cool fun thing to do for a lot of the photographers and then of course there was the videographers so videographers would essentially take videos of different tours which was really really cool because not everybody has a great videographing skill and if you're on holiday sometimes it's difficult to want to be capturing the moment versus being in the moment right so you could buy videos that was captured by a videographer um, of the different tours of the different places that you ended up going to right so that's a pretty cool job too so i probably have lost a few different positions along the way but i just want to i just want to basically tell you how many options there are which is incredible so if you're feeling lost start from there <laughs> okay and um yeah so cruise ships back to that I've told you more or less a very small smidge of all the different positions you could apply for and I'm sure you're also wondering okay well you know like where did the ships sail of course they sail globally different cruise lines have different ships that live in different areas I want to say because they'll port that's their home port for a specific amount of time and then they will sail between those destinations back and forth back and forth back and forth and uh, you know it, it is a very interesting opportunity to work on a cruise line what I do want to highlight and I'm sure whenever you if you are somebody that's been on a cruise ship and you're watching this just out of pure interest but for those of you that don't know working on a cruise line is extremely hard work and that's for every single department not one department has less or more work than the other it's an equal amount of work according to the position that you're in what I mean by that is every single department you're going to be working seven days a week for your contract duration so if you're somebody that's working for a four-month contract that's really great you could be somebody working for a six-month contract or a nine-month contract i have been on a ship where i was working with somebody who was in the boutiques she was on going on eight months she was literally disembarking the ship they called her back because her replacement got ill she had to come back on board for two weeks she came back on board for two weeks. She was meant to disembark and then what ended up happening was the person that was supposed to replace her didn't make their flight, they weren't coming anymore, they just, it, they just disappeared into thin air. She ended up working almost 10 months without a single day off and I mean that gets really, really, really hectic. And when I say no days off, I mean we don't get a Saturday off, you don't get a Sunday off, you don't get a Monday off, it's just that's how it is. You get time off. So on a typical day, you will get sufficient breaks uh, for the length of time that you're working, of course. And on the cruise line I worked for, 
I was very fortunate enough to have a break management team on every ship I worked on where time allocation for breaks was fair and it was generous and none of us felt like we were on the brink of absolute pure collapse and if we were feeling that way we could speak to our management openly and they would give us extra time off but it was never days off okay the only time the only time I've had a full day off okay and this is like <laughs> it was Christmas every day it came I was on a contract uh, sailing through the Mediterranean and for those of you that have sailed through Turkey and Istanbul you'll know that if you sail into Istanbul you have to basically be there for two days because how the canal works is everybody goes in one way for one day and then everybody comes out the other day so it's a really interesting system and in how they do it so it means that you're there for two days our like I said I had a great management team our manager made sure that one half of the team could have a full day off and then the other half of the team had to either be on safety duty or stock work. So she made it really, really fair. Everybody had an equal rotation of having at least one day off for those cruises, which was amazing. And let me tell you, Istanbul is gorgeous. So yeah, that is essentially what it means to work hard on a cruise ship. And um, oh, I forgot about one more department actually. You could go into the nursing or doctor department. So paramedics, nurses and doctors. We have those on board as well, which is really essential for a lot of cruise lines. So if you have that kind of um, experience and you, of course you've got the qualification for it and you would love to travel, this is a really good way to do it as well. It is non-stop uh, because if it's not a passenger being sick it's a crew member being sick so it can be really busy and the team of um, the medical team on board is usually not very big but everybody I met that was in the medical team they were really good people and you know it was fun for them too so despite the obligation to health and safety for all of the passengers and the crew they were still able to live a little you know while they were on board so that is essentially a very quick overview of uh, cruise ship work okay in the next coming videos i'm going to delve into the different recruiting agencies you can like, look into um, ship life what it's really like when you're on board and where I traveled, the incredible opportunities and places I got to see and do when I was working on board, what I liked about working on a ship, what I didn't like about working on a cruise ship. So there's a lot of content that I'm going to delve deeper into. And what I want to just reiterate here is it's not for everyone. If you are thinking about it and you're like, you know what, I could, I could tackle those odds, then do it. Just do it. If you do one contract and hate it, it's okay <laughs> at least you tried and of course i'm sure there are a lot of people that are probably questioning oh how do i get on board you know what are the things i need do i need to do a course yes yes and yes there are a couple of things that you will need if you need to if you want to work on a cruise ship and you need to apply online but i will definitely go into that stuff for you guys so that you're not left in the dark and you know exactly what to expect thank you guys remember to like and subscribe and as always Give me some comments in the section below to let me know if you worked on the ships or if you've wanted to work, or if you've wanted to work on a ship and uh, if you have any fears about it i'm happy to answer any questions so just pop them down here below thank you